going to get. They nailed Jim Wright this week, which gave me great pleasure. Step in the right direction. What a... He, he, and he raves for an hour, his final swan song. I don't know if you caught any of that speech on C-SPAN, which is rapidly becoming my network of choice. <laughs> it's the only place you can get. It's just, they, you know, it's just people coming out, you know, just politicians raving. But he spent an hour talking about, you know, his martyrdom. What a fuck. <laughs> talking about, oh, you know, gee, you know, I really am a sacrificial lamb. Christ was a sacrificial lamb. You're a prick. I <laughs> 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 was kidding. You know, he's buggy to talk about, oh, you know, it's, you, know it's, if it, you know, it's no different than what anybody else does, then get them all out of here. <laughs> if they're all pulling it, then... And the ethics committee not only found him pretty much guilty of what they said, but then they were finding other shit he was doing. And then the Tony Colo or Coelho or Koala Bear, <laughs> the third ranking Democrat. Where's Ted Kennedy then? Really? Ted's like kind of waddling around at the bottom, I guess. Still not having recovered. The stroke, I guess, which led to the accident. <laughs> Tony Quello, and then he says, well, I don't really want to go through this, so I'm just going to resign. I didn't do anything wrong. It's <laughs> unmitigated. He only made 6000 bucks on a $100,000 investment that he didn't put any money up for. <laughs> I, I, that, if, I, if that's... <laughs> nobody's calling me about that. I got this thing recently, the... Uh, the uh, the human mind is uh, really can go to really uh, remarkable places. It's always amazing. And racism always uh, I find stunning uh, in the fact that it just you know that we still continue this way. And, uh, David Dukes was elected in um, in uh, Louisiana to uh, to the uh, House down there, uh, rep the the representative House in Louisiana, and uh, basically by a group of uh, people who intermarried in a small uh, place down there. <laughs> David Dukes, it turns out, was the work with, was, a, was a grand festoon of the Klan for a while. But you say he joined because they threw good parties. <laughs> um, and then he was also, and he was also, and still is, the head of the National Association for the Advancement of White People. Uh, I, I know, and that is remarkable. Only in Louisiana would they even come up with that concept. But I don't know, we haven't really gone far enough. And he claims that he's, you know, he's really, he's not a racist. Well, you know, the National Association of the Advancement of White People uh, if, sends out the following books, which you can get, some of which I'm going to pick up. <laughs> but this is unbelievable. You Gentiles. <laughs> A boasting anti-Gentile attack by a prominent Jew. <laughs> Very revealing of Jewish attitudes. Yeah, right. Things like, oh yeah, those fucking pig shits. I saw that Gentile. He was eating white cake. <laughs> kind of a facts are facts. Excellent probe of the Jewish question by a Jewish scholar. I didn't want to touch that. <laughs> Jews must live. A Jew reveals shady business practices of Jews. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, don't go, oh. <laughs> love to read that book. What do you think I do at the door? <laughs> Just make it a hand over fit. I can look over there, take a ten. Who Rules the Media? Excellent booklet documenting the Zionist control of America's mass media. Yeah, right, we control the mass media. Then what am I doing fucking in a basement? <laughs> Plot Against Christianity. Excerpts of the Talmud with Hebrew and English side by side. Veal File. This one, two volumes which exposes the one-sidedness of the Nuremberg War Trial. Yeah. You can't really it. And it describes the Russian and Allied war crimes that go unpublished. The one-sidedness of the, 
the Norberg war trial. I mean, that you got to do almost acid to get to that position. That's extraordinary. And then there's the Senator Bilbo. I, I got to find out where he's from. I've heard that. Name. Huh? Faggotsville? Do you know Senator Bilbo? You? Oh, that's, oh, I got you. I never, I never read that book. I never did. I said, ah, it's too cute. Tony, you know Senator Bilbo? I've never heard of him. A U.S. Senator makes a well-documented case for racial integrity. Unbelievable. It's a uh, hobbit all right. <laughs> My name is Louis Black, by the way, for the two of you who may not know me. I am, uh, it's my pleasure this evening uh, to be working here, of course, with Rand Forrester, our artistic director, who's, who's on lights and sound this evening. Uh, Rowan Joseph, our uh, managing director, is actually in Mackinac Island, um, in Michigan. I don't know, it makes no sense to me. Uh, Steve Olson is in the Poconos. Uh, I propose that we just call him at 4 in the morning. I'll give you his number there. Just say, God, we had a good time down there today. And then just make up stuff. And, uh, and actually later, uh, since he isn't around, we'll be giving rides on the dessert cart for a while. Do you remember uh, Tony Walsh who's behind the bar? He's, he's, he leaves a, a truly pedestrian life. <laughs> he's, he's, no, poor Tommy is like, did you win this today in the trap, Tom? No, I stopped The horse is ran without him. <laughs> Tony will tell you he's one of the finest betters in the country, which is why he's working in the basement with us. <laughs> He'll give you some great book, boy. He's given me some of the greatest bets of my life. And then uh, Michael is your waiter. It's his birthday this evening, so. <laughs> Michael's 67. <laughs> yeah, he's, but he's been a waiter all his life, and that's why he's been able to retain his youth. No, do remember them, because obviously, there it's rent still. Michael's going to have to move in here. <laughs> Uh, this week we've got Oregon by Peter Hedges. We've got uh, Rusty McGee uh, with Patty Darcy. You know, the show called Me and Rusty McGee, where you'll get to uh, hear uh, Rusty's musical compositions, which is extraordinary to say the least. Uh, he's a, a, a truly a gifted composer. It's well worth your time to catch him. Uh, also, um, s stick around this evening because uh, we'll be doing the free show because we have no life. Midnight, we're going to do it. So if you want, you can actually, if you leave, you can leave and go up to Port Authority. And if you don't get lucky, you can jump back and be starting the show. Um, you can pick up also uh, the week after next. We're doing a play called Our Father, uh, which I'm in and Rand is in, which we initially did at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in 1985. And uh, we've decided to bring it back because somebody is making a documentary of it for the National Association for the Advancement of White People. <laughs> yeah. No, the, uh, it's, it's the story of, uh, it's basically six Irish brothers that they're at a bar and, and they're carrying around their, their father's uh, casket. It's kind of an upbeat <laughs> comic thing. No, it's the Irish, is the, only the Irish can be just yelling and screaming at each other <laughs> with self-loathing and loathing of others. And the happy, the lucky Irish people. Um, <laughs> we, of course, are uh, taping the show tonight for the Armed Forces. <laughs> Everything that we do now is sent immediately out to them. They just can't get enough of our stuff. The Air Force Academy has a little place, a little rusty shrine. Where they, uh, they gather daily to listen to tapes. It's, uh, and that's about it. Um, pick up the schedule. It'll tell you what we're doing for the next few weeks. And uh, right now it's my pleasure to bring you Really, the, the man I love to call my husband. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rasta McGee. Yeah. Who's black, ladies and gentlemen? Jama. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to play two hours of reggae music. Coming down to see Rusty 
my game, but you got me instead. I'm Rusty's evil twin brother, we're both the same, except my locks are dread. There ain't nothing I love more in the world than reggae music. You may wonder why reggae means so much to an Irish boy like me. When I was born, my mother gave me the unforgettable name of Rasta Maggi. And when I wake up in the morning, I like to turn on my reggae TV. Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. Poor mountaineer barely kept his family dread. And then one day he was shooting at some food. Our tour. <laughs> Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day and make it all seem worthwhile? I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot Deputy Barney Fife. Look at Jack Lord's hair now on Hawaii Five-O. Everybody sing along with the all twelve of you. Me -o. The Jiffy Pop, the Jiffy Pop, the Jiffy Pop, the Jiffy Pop hat. I like to stuff my dreadlocks into my Jiffy Pop hat. Jiffy Pop hat, Jiffy Pop hat, the magic treat. As much fun to smoke ganja as it is to eat. <laughs> Reggae! Thank you so much, everybody, for coming to see my show tonight. Maybe you've seen me before. You see that movie, Mighty Queen? I play third Irish asshole from the left. Very big part for me. Reggae is so important to me. When I was a little boy growing up reading Archie comics, I always sympathized with the Reggae character. You know, the one with the... Okay. You know what the most popular word in Jamaica is? Yes, it's ear. 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 It's nice to recycle those old Cheech and Chong jokes. <laughs> Good evening and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here tonight. I'm Rusty McGee with my charming erudite brand of comedy. Sheriff Martin Sharnan were down here this evening to see me. I'll be opening for Bobby Short at the Cafe Carlisle in a matter of weeks. It was the third of June, another sleepy, dusty New York day. I was sure looking forward to doing my show at the West Bank Cafe. You know, I called my friend up and I asked him to videotape the show. And he said he'd come down as soon as he got his camera back from Rob Lowe. And Rusty spends a lot of time with his flowers over on the FDR his flyers, I mean, and throw them into the muddy water of the 59th Street Bridge. <laughs> These things aren't worth the paper they're printed on. Of course, you could turn them in for food stamps after the show. But I did a mass marketing leaflet drop by helicopter over, over the Bronx, but I guess not a lot of people were able to read the English on the program. <laughs> But it's so great that you're here tonight, because although we are small, we are vociferous and we are happy, and together we will turn into a teeming, swarming trove of happy people. Mike stand. There we go. That's a little fading away from me there. But you know how it is. I 
look at it this way. Everybody's got a song to sing. Everybody's got a sky. And everybody knows a funny story. And everybody knows how to flash a smile. Everybody knows how to make you cry. Then make you feel alright. Everybody's got a one-man show. But I'm doing Everybody's got a beautiful voice and a microphone to amplify it. And everybody's got something important to say. If they'd only just get up on stage, get up on stage and try it. That's why I'm sitting here in the spot. I'm gonna do it till I get it right. Everybody's got a one-man show. You know, everybody, everybody's got a one-man show. Even Neil Diamond's got a one-man show, but I'm doing mine, doing mine for you and me. So we are going to have fun tonight. We're going to share, we're going to care, and we're going to grow. But I thought we'd start with a little sing-along, shall we? Yeah. All right, let's give it a try. I was throwing these off the, off the 59th Street Bridge all day. Yeah. Oh, Sam Rusty, 
All you gotta do is listen to those old songs. <laughs> I've been crying lately, thinking about how to speak blaspheme. Why should he go on living? Why shouldn't we kill him? But there's a thousand angry Muslims going to find him on a death train. Death train getting closer, right on the death train. You know, I always knew that the cat was a little lacking up there, you know. He's the type that would espouse uh, a fanatical religion, you know, because, you know. Remember the T for the Tillerman album where, where he sang like, Mary drops her pants by the sand, and lets her parson come and take her hand. But the soul that nobody knows where the parson goes. Oh. Those were his actual lyrics. I mean, what the fuck was he into? <laughs> I'm looking for a hard-headed woman, headed woman. I think you better look for a hard-headed helmet cat because I think you're a little lacking upstairs there. But that was the cat, and uh, of course he's doing his Ayatollah thing right now. And, you know, Joe Franklin starts in about two hours. I think we'll all catch it. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be one of these nights. Because I come up here and I, you know, I'm worried about doing a good job and everything. And I can't even hear the laughter over the air conditioning in the room. But that doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I've got to loosen myself up a little, so I'm just going to mosey over the bar and shoot up. <laughs> no, I'm going to come out and say hi to some of, our, some of our audience here, which seems to be growing by leaps and bounds. Hi, hi what's your name, sir? <laughs> That's very easy to say. It kind of rolls trippingly off the tongue. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, it, what, what is that, an Arabic name? Or... <laughs> your Irish cousin, are you? Okay, so what is your name? Peter. Peter, yes. Peter. It's nice to meet you, Pete. Uh, what is it that you do do? What is it that you do? Actor. Actor. Ah, very good. Real conversation killer. <laughs> I guess the show got out early tonight, huh? So you popped down to the West Bank. No, Peter, it's, it's good to have a fellow member of the union here. And uh, thank you for, uh, well, for basically letting me do my Phil Donahue impression. <laughs> Peter and, and, and all of your friends and, and, and everyone that's here tonight, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I need you. I am you. <sighs> well, now that we've gotten that out of the way, I'd like to just bring Lewis back up and we're going to start all over. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've been down here in this basement for, for, for so long that I, I just... Uh, I'm beginning to lose track of reality, you know, uh, especially like living in the same room with Lou for 40 hours a week. So you'll have to bear with me. But Lewis, Lewis did teach me how important that uh, that social com commentary was in my comedy, and that's why I put together this next song, a little bit of social commentary and protest here at the West Bank. <laughs> I got a visa and I've done too now. You wanna get a discover? Maybe together we can get all the charge cards. Amex is better. Charge no interest, just paid every month, and you get that free insurance. If you break it, they'll pay right back. You got a gold card. I got a plan to make us lots of cash. Been working at on investment scheme. Managed to get us in the lower tax bracket. We gotta make a decision. Trying to diversify, should we go with somebody else? <laughs> Triple tax free to pay municipal bonds. <laughs> you see, my broker's got a problem. <laughs> this video was gonna go right to Star Search, too. You see, my broker's got a problem. He doesn't think I should file K401 stick with a money mark. Maybe some hot new mutual funds, but he left for the Hamptons. I 
can't even reach on his car phone now. We need to make a decision. <laughs> Sell the car or we'll get a car loan. <laughs> so remember we were driving in your BMW 0 to 16 5.9. Let's go back to the Upper East Side and order some sushi and a nice dry red wine. I, I wish that I could find a good nanny. And I, I want to watch something on TV. 30-something, 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 you got a golden car, maybe we should go do club, man, yeah, let's get out of the city, cause out here February is really dead, let's go up to Sadie Bars, and buy foreign coffee percolator and a vapor ice, high nice humidifier. <laughs> You got a gold car. Maybe we should buy Kruger Rands. We can afford to be bullish. Even my shrink says she understands. Maybe you get the picture. We're just sitting still, not doing anything. We're just getting richer. And I'm just clutching that nice brass ring. So remember, we were living life in the fastest lane. Hot shot, high tech, money's worth. Still, one thing I don't understand is what's so funny about separated at birth. I, I have a goal to make my life complete before I die. I would really, really like to meet Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. He's got a gold car. You gotta go, go. I want a platinum car. Social protest here in the state platform. Isn't it nice to know that uh, the 60s finally reached China? It took 20 years. But uh, in 20 years, we multiply by seven, and now instead of four dead in Ohio, it's 28 dead in China. I just wish that some of those 28 could have been in this audience tonight. <laughs> That's good, Rusty. That's good. That'll really get him. That's excellent. Beautiful. Alienate him. Maybe they'll leave. Maybe you'll fulfill a Buddhist fantasy of performing to an audience of none. It's good though, that's good. Keep with the China stuff, it's very tropical. <laughs> yeah, okay. We've got a topical cream, I'd like to. <clears throat> oh boy. Feel free to talk, respond, because hey, I, I'm dying up here. Ha! Ah, well, that's refreshing. <laughs> to trip and fall flat on your face in front of an audience. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, gosh. <clears throat> I think we're ready. Yes, I, I do think we are. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, class. It's very nice to have you here. I'll be ready in one minute. <laughs> Find the little hole. That's right. You're going to get extra credit for that. <laughs> I hope you are all here in the right class. This is, of course, the new school course in lyric analysis of the 1960s. I hope you're all registered and have paid your tuition. Uh, this is, of course, an eight-week course in which we analyze the lyrics of the songs of the 1960s. So if you will please open in your collective texts to page 68. We will begin with our first lyric analysis, and here is how I would like to conduct the class. Uh, all, all semester, what we're going to do is we're going to listen to, listen to portions of songs and analyze the lyrics. And please feel free to throw in any comments you have about these songs and about what you, these lyrics mean to you and how they make you feel after I'm done talking. Thank you. All right, so uh, if you are open to page 60, 68, you will find your first song. So let's delve right into it, shall we? Here we go. Let me please adjust my podium here. Because it... <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> Read about it in the Inquirer. Comic explodes on stage. I'm still in character. <laughs> 
Here we go. images of cartwheels and wheels and boats and trains and planes, boats without rudders, people adrift at sea without emotion. Look for that. Perhaps this is a, a subliminal message and we'll see more of those as we go along. I was feeling kind of seasick. Again, a sea reference that uh, could be a subtle, obscure reference to drop acid or maybe just Dramamine. <laughs> benevolent, loving crowd like we had at Woodstock 20 years ago, or was it a more vicious crowd like we had at Altamont? The room was humming harder. Now this, of course, is a, a reference and a loving uh, tribute, a homage, if you will, to the wonderful work of Janis Joplin, one of the great hard-humming people of the 1960s. As the ceiling flew away, now this is a wonderful drug reference, this, the ceiling flying away, and it's also almost by itself, if you extricated it from the lyric, a mini haiku. <laughs> we call out for another drink. What kind of a drink was it that we were calling out for? Was it a tea of lies, perhaps, brewed by our, our government about our involvement in Southeast Asia? The waiter brought a tray. Tray, of course, this is a reference to the French. Tray, meaning very, as in tray, rococo, uh, very, Peter Max, even Artie Johnson, very interesting. And so we Let's go right to the second verse. You said there is no reason. This is a per perfectly constructed line, and I need not comment on it. Plain to see. This is a wonderful double entendre. The truth is plain to see. Plain, again, the transportation metaphor. And see, again, the movement metaphor. <laughs> As I wandered through my playing cards. Playing cards, the image of bicycle playing cards. Again, transportation. <laughs> it would not let her be. Predating the Beatles' Let It Be by four years predating the Rolling Stones' Let It Bleed by five years, and predating by 20 years, Linda Ellerbe. <laughs> One of 16 festival virgins. Now think of the Roman numeral 16, and you even get more beautiful alliteration, festival virgins, bringing up images of groupies and plaster casters and everything. <laughs> Who were leaving for the coast. Don McLean, three men I admire most. They caught the last train for the coast. It was here first, guys. And although my eyes were open, they might just as well be closed. A generation lost with eyes closed, yearning for meaning, and finding meaning in whatever obscure, stupid songs they wanted to find it in. <laughs> and so it was later. This is a time reference bringing us back to the present via the future and the past. As the mirror told his tale, this is an homage to Lewis Carroll, the images of mirrors and mouse tails and even, even child molestation and cross-dressing. 
that her face at first just ghostly. Now the singer has obscured this lyric, and scholars like myself have pondered for ages, well, decades anyway, the true meaning. Did he say her face at first just ghostly or had burst just ghostly? I don't know. You decide. <laughs> Turn to water, shade of pale, a wider shade of pale. Reminiscent of the new wave painting white on white, a white cube on a white canvas. Or maybe just a reference to a brand of paint brought out by both Dutch Boy and Sherwin Williams in the year 1966. <laughs> Think about it. Now class, I want you to prepare for next week, and we will continue. And please analyze and write a report on the next song, which you'll find on page 69 of your text. Take the load off Fanny. Take the load for free. Dismissed. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. No, that's okay. You can talk. We have a list of specials. We have some wonderful blended drinks, which order one during the ballad. <laughs> Please, we got some fun that ad lib, aren't I? <laughs> <clears throat> Once again, as always, I refer back to Louis Black, my mentor. Or, the, what's the Yiddish word for that? Menta? <laughs> kind of like a male yenta. But uh, he taught me the importance of political comedy, which is why I do so little of it. <clears throat> but times are tough, and there's a couple of jokers that just demand it. And so let's do it. He's just a heartbeat from the presidency. He's just a heartbeat from the presidency. That's today's Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle is traveling tonight on a plane. I can see Air Force Two taxiing in the rain. Oh, and I can see Dan Quayle wondering why, huh? Lord, I think Dan Quayle is a pretty stupid guy. Oh, Dan Quayle, the golfer, is better than me. But when it comes to IQs, his is about 23. Dan Quayle, you're the guy that we love to despise. Daniel Quayle is my name and I'm one of Indiana's elite. My daddy was a billionaire so he bought me a congressional seat. Ran on Reagan's coattails eight years ago and was elected the junior senator, you know. I played lots of golf and kept a low profile. I got a call from George Bush and in a little while we had the night that we drove to Cockers Down. And all Republicans were sighing the night that we drove the liberals down. And all the Democrats were crying, they cried, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Maybe I'm amazed at just how stupid I can be. And maybe I'm amazed that George Bush picked me Maybe I'm afraid that I can't do what they want me to do I was never that good in school And I can't read a word unless it's written down for me Maybe I'm a man, maybe I'm a lonely man Who's in the middle of something That he doesn't really understand Georgie boy, do us all a favor, stay alive. If you can't survive, you'll spare us all the terror we dread. Don't die, please. Hey there, Georgie boy, 
You are still a wimp, but now you're Prez. Let me please suggest a vest that's oozy or bulletproof. Please wear it. No time for open motorcades. Stay at home with your mom or your wife or whoever that woman with the white hair is. It just takes one Oswald with a bomb to off you. Hey there, Georgie boy. If you die in office, we're all screwed. Cause you had the great foresight to choose someone so absurd. Give us your word. Don't die, Georgie Bush. Long live Georgie Bush. Up yours, Georgie Bush. Just for you, Georgie Bush. He took the heartbeat from the brother on CD. He got the heart He from the presidency That today is damn Quail Lewis will be talking about Dan at the uh, free show tonight Which is the show that comes up after this one The one that you won't have to pay for, kind of like this one. <sighs> so uh, stick around for Lewis, because it really is going to be a lot of fun. And, and while I'm in, at this brief pause in the show, I do want to thank the... Uh, actually, we're, we're the ones in the service position. They are the artistic staff, and that's your bartender, Tony, and Michael, your waiter, who do a hell of a job. And uh, please... <clears throat> have the iodine spritzer ready for me as soon as the show is over. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Well, it's time to mourn the death of, the death of a, a close friend of mine. So bear with me for one second. saddened by this, but uh, let's continue forward with this again. Let's say goodbye to a friend that we love. Raise your glasses high and mourn the death of the album, the record album, the 33 and a third. Can the album really be dead? I'm afraid so, folks. It means a lot to me because, hell, I was born just around the same time that the album came into existence. It was 1955. Rock and roll was on everybody's mind. And everybody was tired of clunky old 78 RPM discs made of lacquer or, or varnish or whatever they were made of. They, they were old. They were unwieldy. We didn't want them. We wanted something better, more technological, and we got it. We got high fidelity, high fi We got it in the form of the long playing Dynagroove Stereophonic 33 and a third Diamond Stylist record album. The long play, the LP for short. And the LP, 12 inches by 12 inches of perfect music. One square foot. You know, when I was in college, when I had to buy a, a, a rug or something, Floor. I used to use a record album to measure the floor because I knew it would be just right. The record, you know, to our parents, they were a novelty. And to, to today's kids, they're a non entity. But to us, they were a necessity. Of course, they were popular originally as jazz, or I'm sorry, uh, soundtrack albums. And then, of course, we had, no, that, that doesn't belong in there either. We had jazz albums for jazz enthusiasts. And finally, we had collections of singles put into LP form. But albums grew just the same way we did. And soon, your identity was partially formed by the albums you had in your collection. 
If you owned a copy of Cream's Disraeli Gears, it made a great statement about yourself. A much different statement than if you owned a Partridge Family record. Well, buying a record album became a ritual to, uh, to me and many other teenage music connoisseurs. Hours of time spent in the record stores wondering whether to blow your $4.95 hard-earned cents on, on Led Zeppelin II or the new Pro Hill. But once you decided and got home, the real rapturous ritual would begin. First, there was the shrink wrap. Now, you know what I'm talking about. The plastic that, that covers the record and wraps it to protect it. You know, usually it was so difficult to get off that you couldn't even use an X-Acto knife or a Gillette razor. You ended up digging your fingernails into the side of the opening just to get, and you'd end up with bloody fingernails. And then came the great question, philosophical question of the mid to late 20th century. And that's whether to leave the shrink wrap on your record or to take it off. Now, some people say, leave it on because it'll protect the cover of the album. But there are people who swear that if you leave it on, it will warp your records. Now, how many people took the shrink wrap off? Let me see, let me see bloody fingernails. Let me hear you. How many people left them on? Well, I was a leaver on it. I swear, I broke up with two different girlfriends over this very same argument. But, you know, invariably, the shrink wrap would come off of my record, either out of deference to a living companion or sometimes just out of sheer boredom. But when you got the record open, then the real ritual and the rapture would begin. First of all, as you opened it, you got the tactile sense of the record. First of all, there's the smell of polyvinyl chloride, new, new PVC. Oh, that's great. It's like vanilla or gasoline or, or mimeograph paper when you're in third grade. Remember that? <laughs> and the feel, the tactile sense of the record. Many would salivate in sheer Pavlovian response to the joy of such a purchase. <laughs> then the ritual would continue, and I don't care if you owned a $1,500 KLH or Harman Kardon component stereo system, or if you had a tinny little phonograph record player with a picture of Felix the Cat on the tone on it. You would do the same thing. You'd gently blow the dust off the needle. If you were a real, if you were a real snob, you'd have one of those disc washers and you'd get it all clean. And then you'd put the record album on and you'd listen to the music. And while you did that, you'd greedily read the, the back and the inside and the front of the record album cover. Much the same way you greedily devoured that bowl of Lucky Charms earlier that morning for breakfast. I should write for the Wonder Years, don't you? Ah, uh, the album cover. Perfect size for album art, unlike the puny cassette or the CD. The album cover was beautiful for, for you know, for psychedelic art or for uh, uh, liner notes. For for jazz enthusiasts, or even just for clues to whether Paul was dead or not. <laughs> and albums were, the way you played them was a perfect tool for psychotic, obsessive, schizophrenic behavior, because the way that the mechanism would repeat. I listened to side two of Joni Mitchell's Blue 833 times in a row in March and April of 1973. <laughs> then there was the true homage to Excess, the double album, like the White Album by the Beatles, or Tommy by the Who, or, or like Woodstock, which is like a triple album. <laughs> but you know, the best thing about double albums was um, that they were great for removing the herb from the seed. <laughs> of, course, of course, you could use a fold-out album for that, too, like Crosby, Stills, and Nash, or uh, uh, King Crimson. But uh, the funny thing about fold-out albums is you had to remove the shrink wrap. So maybe it wasn't right. <laughs> and sure, your albums had, had surface noise. They had wow and pop and flutter. Sure, they had scratches. But each of those scratches was, was a scratch of love. And every scratch had a story behind it. The sound of a needle scratching over a record was the sound of our generation. We were young, we were mobile. We wanted to hear the sound of our own music, and if we didn't like the song, we didn't want to hear it, let alone sing it. But now, technology has once again reared its ugly head. Not to mention the greedy record executives. And 
the hungry, record-buying public. First, we got, in the form of new technology, the aforementioned cassette. And then my particular bone of contention, the CD. Ah, oh, yes, the CD. The perfect yuppie toy. Little, clean, expensive, and sterile. You know, you can take your cassettes to, like, the beach and, like, your CDs into your Mercedes. I mean, you can't have a record player in your Mercedes. But let us remember our albums. Let us cherish them like decaying frescoes in Italian museums. They are our heritage. You know, recently I, I celebrated a birthday of sorts. Uh, the planet had spun around the sun 33 and a third times with me on it. My 33 and a third birthday. And on my 33 and a third, I remember the 33 and a third. The album. The LP. You know, if you go into some record stores these days in malls, they don't have albums anymore. They've got cassettes and CDs and posters of Bon, bon Jovi. But no albums. Goodbye, old friend. <laughs> Let's say goodbye to a friend that we love. <laughs> Raise your glasses high and mourn the death of the album. The record album, the 33 and a third long-playing album. Come on, everybody sing along. Good night, you moonlight ladies. Rock up our sweet baby James. That's right. You know the deep greens and blues are the colors that I choose. You should hear it on CD, it sounds great. Don't you let me go down in my dream. And rock up our sweet baby James. Before you go out and invest a lot of money in CDs, just remember 8-track. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you when I turn 45. I tell you, he's really good. Let's break down into discussion groups now. Look, yeah, I had an eight track, a lot of Johnny Mathis and Jim Neighbors records. I got fucked by an eight track. I think you ought to sell your story to some to Inside Edition. <clears throat> well, I'd like to depart from my prepared text now. <laughs> Why is it whenever I get up on stage, something always goes wrong? Either the, the music falls off, the goddamn mic stand is like doing its Yuri Geller impression. <laughs> But I'm cursed. I'm cursed with a wonderful group of friends that are in the audience tonight. And I'm grateful that you all came here for this. So, right now, I think, uh, gosh, the old clock on the wall says, Rusty, it's 1138. Are we still charging people who want to come in for the free show? I hope. I hope so. Uh, we have a very special guest uh, that I'd like to present over on this side of the room right now. Uh, to close the show, so uh, bring him out. Maybe we'll get the follow spot over on him. <laughs> I, I forgot to ask people how my hair was for the entire show, the video and stuff. It's not sweat here, it's natural mousse, I like to think of that. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, be impishly handsome. <laughs> All right, I think we are ready for this um, this little special. Uh, oh, I just sat on my albums. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready for this. Uh, are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Hello, I'm Rusty on tape, and I am coming at Rusty, you from your left, and I'm Rusty live, coming at you from your right. And right now, we'd, we'd like, like to, to pay tribute, tribute to the wonderful harmonies of the, the Fab, Fab Four. Yes, yes a medley, medley of the songs of John, Paul, George, and Ringo. 
So, please enjoy Rusty on Tape and Rusty Live and the Harmonies of the Beatles. <laughs> You really got a hold on me. You really got a hold on me. Baby, I love you, and all I want you to do is just to hold me, please. Hold me, squeeze. Hold me. Hold me. <laughs> Nicely sung, Rusty. Well, you're sounding an excellent voice yourself tonight, Rasta Man. Whenever I, 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 I want you around, yeah. All I gotta do is call you on the phone and you'll come running home. Yeah, that's all I gotta do. And the same goes for me. Whenever you want me at all, I'll be here, yes I will. Whenever you call, you just gotta call on me, yeah. You just gotta call on me. Rusty, Rusty, let, let, let me take the high harmony on this one. I, I think it's a little out of your range. Fine, just make sure you remember all the words. If I fell in love with you, would you promise to be true and help me understand? Cause I've been in love before and I found that love was more than just holding hands. I'll take the high part. If I gave my heart to you, I must be sure from the very Love me more than her Cause I couldn't stand the pain And I would be sad if I knew love Was in vain So I hope you see That I would love to love you And that she Thank you, thank you very much, folks. That's a lot of fun. Listen, I, I know you can't see me, but I, I just want to say that someday I'll get a partner who knows how to sing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rusty and Tate. Listen, man, you, you seem to be forgetting. I created you, man. I made you. I can destroy you. <laughs> destroy me? <laughs> hey, Rusty, Rusty, don't look now, but without me, you are nothing. Without my harmonies, you are insignificant. Great. <laughs> All the pleasing with you, it's so hard to reason with you. Oh, yeah, why do you make me blue? Oh, yeah, why do you make me blue? I have to see the face, I can't forget the time or place that we just met. She's just the girl for me, and I want all the world to see we met. Na, 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 na. Falling, falling, yes, I am falling, and you need to pull me back again. Like of this, I've been alone and not had these things and kept out of sight. But as it is, I'll dream of her tonight. Na, 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 na. Everybody falling and I'm falling and he's calling me back again. Falling, yet I'm falling and he's calling me back again. Na, 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 na. Thank 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank and good night. night. Director here on the 3rd of June, Sleepy Dusty New York Day. Right now I want to bring up, for my encore, Mr. Louis Black. Yeah. Louis Black on stage with Rusty? Isn't that like Matter and Andy Matter? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's frame this nicely for the video. It's going to be a very nice kind of 3D thing. Okay? So, you know, is that good? Is that good? Yeah, that's great. You just tell us, man. Okay. okay. Lewis actually wasn't even watching the show this evening. He was back in our office <laughs> doing what Lou and I love to do best, and that's, of course, watching television. We're going to tell you about it. Flip on the TV, you buy a quarter to five. Jane Paul is looking good, and Brian Gumble's talking job. Willard Scott's dressed up in a pair of high heeled shoes. We got the early morning couch to take The Today Show, live from Joliet Prison, a reunion of the cast of Gomer Pie. <laughs> Later in the day, all the game shows come on. But I don't watch that crap. I'd rather see an abused mom. Or a devil worshiper. A college professor who used to be a porn star. Or a gay granddad named Waldo. On Oprah, Sally, Jesse, Phil, or Geraldo. Today on Oprah, lesbian Amway salesman. <laughs> I turn the 12 o'clock news on to keep me in the know. 23 minutes of commercials in a half hour news show. A guy from Acme Welding tells me I can keep the tools. I got the midday couch potato blue. Then we get the soaps for an afternoon movie. I make myself a snack. I crack a beer. I'm feeling groovy. Can't believe how much we pay for cable TV. Seven channels and nothing to see. Bye, 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 bye. C-SPAN. J-Dan Fourth Quail speaks to anyone who'll listen. <laughs> now I go live at five or whatever strikes my whimsy. Michelle Marsh seems pretty dumb, but she looks better than Roger Grimsby. I lock the door, take the phone off the hook, take my clothes off, and at 7 p.m. I watch Jeopardy in the buff. Yeah. Then we get the nighttime soaps with what will they bomb us? Mindless sitcoms and yuppie infested dramas. I can't believe the shit I see. I got a hunch that the plot I saw on LA Law this morning was on the Brady Bunch. Wednesday, 10 p.m. CBS, wise guy, hunk with a gun. Yeah. NBC, nightingales, nurses in lingerie. ABC, China Beach, Vietnam with tits. <laughs> Now the late night talk show dudes all take over the air. What's Paul Schaefer got that I ain't got except a lot less hair? St. <laughs> Jack's gay, Arsenio's au fait, and Letterman is starting to make me snooze. But I'm addicted, I can't quit watching the video shit. I got the 24 hour a day remote control, couch potato blue. 1.30 Friday Night Videos, actors Patrick Dempsey and Kirsten Hathaway introduce videos by Gun Roses. It's a wonderful night for life. News, the Globe, maybe I'll watch Dynasty. WB, the Grand maybe Grand I'll Grand watch Lewis Musty. I'm the video. Snowboarding. Wow, 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 wow.